Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and thank you for joining me for the Peacock Feathers section of the Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination videos. So Peacock Feathers was always one of my first favourite colours. I absolutely adore all turquoise aqua colours. Um, there's been some more added to the range since that I'm in love with too and I'm really excited about the colour combinations that I'm going to show you today so stay tuned right to the end to see all of those. Now while we're looking at this and where it falls within the other colours in the ink and oxide ranges and also what colour combinations you can be doing with it. If you love anything that I'm using so the blending mat, the brushes, the labels that I've got as well and of course the colour chart you can find everything linked down below and while you're browsing down below please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little thumbs up sign at the bottom of the video okay so let's take a look first of all let's swatch peacock feathers onto white cardstock so you can see exactly what it looks like and we tend to then compare it to the lid because the lid is the first thing you're going to be looking at when you're looking at buying a new colour. Whether it's online or whether you're going to a brick and mortar shop uh, you're going to be looking at this part and saying oh do I like that colour. The ink pad of course is inside you won't know what that looks like until you take it out of its packaging at home but as you can see really true to colour to the ink pad which is fully saturated with ink so you'd always expect this to be a little bit darker than the true colour. When we put the lid on though you can see it is very similar but I would say maybe maybe ever so slightly darker but not much at all very very similar so I think the label is very true to colour now if you go and have a look at some of the other videos within this series you'll see that there's actually some colours where this isn't always the case so sometimes the label isn't what I'd consider a true representation of that colour but of course Printing colours, you know, it's a fine art, so sometimes it can't always be perfect. Now, let's take a look at some of the blues and greens within the range. Now, this is the colour chart that I am offering you free to download and print off at home. It's not filled in, it's blank. It's for you to fill in with the colours that you own, and then you can really easily see which colours that you, you still need, which ones you have, and which ones you can mix perfectly. So not only is it a great um, resource for you to just see what you've got but also you can work out well actually would salty ocean go nicely beside pine needles for example and you can do this so I love to use it to help choose my colour combinations as well and it's nice to see them actually blended onto white paper or cardstock. So we've got here my peacock feathers um, as you can see so we've got just above that salvage patina similar sort of colour but a lighter shade certainly cracks pistachio has a lot more green in it mermaid lagoon is really really similar as well i'd say there's a little more green in peacock feathers but not too far off speckled egg down the bottom here let's just lift this up speckled egg is a much lighter shade again now just coming over to the greens because there's some greens so for example pine needles that have quite a lot of blue in them and again this isn't too dissimilar the same with Lucky Clover but you can definitely see that you've got more green in these. I would definitely say if you're looking at doing these colour combinations that I'm showing you today but you don't have peacock feathers I think you could easily switch this for sorry I said Mermaid Lagoon it was actually Broken China apologies a Broken China colour if you have that as well but I mean even Lucky Clover pine needles maybe for the green hint definitely try these with other colours that are similar that you have within your selection if you don't have all of the colours. So let's put the colour chart to the side and let's get on with our first colour combination. Now for this I'm going to be bringing in, so I've got peacock feathers and I've put this in the middle, we're going to bring in Uncharted Mariner and Mustard Seed. So Mustard Seed has just recently had a video of its own released on my channel um, if you do want to see any of the other colour videos that we're doing so far, I'm going through these alphabetically. So uh, as you can see, we're up to the P's. Uh, we're about, I think I worked out, about 40, yeah, about 40 through. So we've got another 31 or something like that to do, roughly. So just blending that. Now I'm being cautious of the fact that I'm going to get a green between peacock feathers and mustard seed. Now, a lot of people have said they have trouble with their blending 
Um, some tips for you I would say is always work in small circles, whether you're working with a foam or a brush, always small circles. Don't be doing long drags of either of the colours into each other because that's where you start getting issues with long streaks. So like I say, small circles in one area and just keep working your way around. Try to keep them both applied at the same time so that one's not drying out more before you put the next one down because that will cause trouble. And do expect to keep going over that blend line, adding more colour. Now I tend to often use a lot of colour that's already on my brush when I'm actually doing the blending, but sometimes you just need a little more colour. So you can see there I've blended from peacock feathers into mustard seed, but it wasn't just a one swipe blend. It was repeatedly going back over each of the colours and just doing small circles just on the edge of that blend line to blend that out. And then if you feel like you've got too much colour going into, say, the yellow, so if I had too much of this peacock feathers coming into the yellow, then I'd take more of my mustard seed, pick that up and blend that through. Do keep, I, I, I would definitely recommend if you can, definitely um, different brushes for each colorway. So a blue, a turquoise, a yellow, a red, an orange, a purple, so on. If you can gradually build up a color for a, sorry, a brush for each color or a blending foam for each color, highly recommended. I don't even have to think about any sort of contamination and what color did I use that for last and any unexpected surprises when I start blending. So then I'm going to go into Uncharted Mariner. Now many of you know this is my all-time favorite color of the Distress range so far. I say so far because I'm led to believe there's one more color yet to be released and then that will be it for the entire um, entire collection of distress colors uh, but we have got a lot to work with now my brush is a little bit it's not very soft it's gone a little bit uh, hard I suppose the bristles so I'm not always getting a super smooth blend so I just come back over again now uncharted mariner into peacock feathers is stunning and don't forget we've still got another color combination to look at in a moment with very different colors Look at that. So when that's dried, it does seem to get this haze over it. It kind of, it's almost like one of those filters that softens everything out. And once uh, oxides dry, you seem to get that look. So definitely never, uh, never stress about color blending not looking perfect until it's dried. So there's our first color combination, mustard seed, peacock feathers and uncharted mariner. And let's just wipe our surface here and pop these away. And we can move on to our next one and I will keep repeating myself but do make sure your mat is clean and dry before you do any blending because otherwise you're just going to end up with colors coming into where you don't want them to be but also you're going to end up with unfortunately um, you're going to end up with water where you've wiped because I use a wet wipe because distress oxides are reactive with water. I use a wet wipe to easily clean my mat on my surface, but if there's any moisture left on my mat and that gets into the ink, that's just going to cause you some issues. So let's now go to salvage patina. This is just the lighter shade of peacock feathers as such. Again, one of my favorite, I must admit, I've got a lot of favorites in here today. Purples and turquoises and those lovely blue greens are gorgeous. So I'm going to work around about just over a quarter of the panel that I'm working on. Now, if I was doing a card, I'd usually be doing much larger panels than this and it would take me a lot longer. And don't forget any of these colors that we've been looking at today, you can do these with the smooch technique. So you can smooch these colors onto your mat, spritz with a bit of water and dip your cardstock in. You don't have to do the perfect blending as I am like this. Um, so definitely play around, but the color combinations will still work quite nicely. So you can see how beautifully these two colors work into each other because they are so similar, but just lighter and darker shades of each other. Let's now wipe this excess off the mat and again, dry the mat, very important. And let's go into Wilted Violet. So this is a lovely bright purple, absolutely adore this. If you love doing things like Halloween, this color is going to be perfect for Halloween because it's that nice touch of brightness when all the other colors are a little bit darker. So 
just working around. First of all, I fill in my solid color. I don't worry about the blending at the start. I fill in the solid color and make sure that's all in little circles. I've caught all the grain of the paper and I've got a nice solid color there. Now, because this is loaded with ink at the moment, I'm not going to work that into the peacock feathers right now. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to come back in with peacock feathers and work up into it. So go against, go along the solid again and then start in small circles, just working my way up a little bit. Now this reminds me very much of some colors that I had in my bedroom. On my walls, I had this sort of purple at the top, this sort of green in the bottom when I was younger and I absolutely loved it. I just realized I didn't, I brought my salvage patina up a little bit high. So I'm just very lightly with what's on my brush coming down. Now I want to take this almost into a pink, but staying within the purple tones there, color there. So I'm just lastly going to go into seedless preserves. So we're getting towards a pink. And if you wanted to do a five color combination, this could then easily lead into something like picked raspberry, a lovely bright color. So let's just take this into here like so. there gorgeous so just blending with what's on my brush at the moment I think I might need a little more of the wilted violet trouble is when I'm doing this I do talk a lot and that gives the colors time to dry between but look at that pop of color at the end beautiful now again I would let that dry before looking at it usually so while that's drying and I'm clearing up if you love any of the other colors that I'm using within this range here. I mean, I'd suggest from this, if you love this, maybe go and check out either Broken China or Mermaid Lagoon. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. That would be really helpful. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you again another time. Take care.